Hello there. How are you doing? I just uh, tried to take uh, my little girlie out, the little Spanish pedenco mia, for a walk. But she wouldn't come. She went round the corner and then pulled it to go back home again. She got a bit lazy. Since, uh, since me at Beauty, the little box had died, you know. And she's been, they've both been like, re you know, the, the last two that we have have both been really a bit upset. Not right. But uh, it was raining this morning and I was up at five, it was pouring a rain. So they wouldn't go out, I don't blame them. So then I just tried again. Nah, still not playing. So I'm gonna get a quick walk myself. I've just been over to the post box and posted some uh, more notices for people for the debt, smashing the debts. So on that smashadebt.com, this one's really interesting. I've done a couple like this lately. So it's quite funny how they try and uh, confuse people, I think would be the right way of putting it, you know, with their responses when you send the DSAR, the Data Subject Access Request, <clears throat> which is a legal notice, you know, that's uh, under GDPR and DPA, Data Protection Act, legally, which is their world, not ours, <clears throat> they must respond within 30 days with compliance. And that's the key. That's the key to it all. It's got to be compliant with the Data Protection Act and compliant with the regulations of the GDPR. And I've never had one ever that's been compliant. They all just talk absolute nonsense. You know, even got one guy, they sent him, <laughs> like, honestly, it was like war and peace book. Uh, all these statements, you know, and that's what they try and do to try and scare you, put you off. Is it like, you know, this is proof that you have a debt. Well, we know debt does not exist. Cannot exist in a debt fiat currency system. Um, and that we are the source of all credit and you create the credit with your sign of nature. When you put your sign of nature on that piece of paper, which is an agreement, all right, remember that, it's an agreement, not a contract, <clears throat> be it for a credit card or a loan or whatever. Anyway, so, I had just sent this uh, a DSAR, specific, specific data subject access request. You've got to be very specific. Don't send them off a DSAR that asks them 3,422 questions, right? You want it to be very specific so that you're pushing them into a corner, all right? So, you know, you're doing it under GDPR, um, asking, you know, specific questions about you know, the Law of Property Act 1925, if you're saying that you actually own this debt, i.e. it's been assigned to you, then you need a deed of assignment. So where is the deed of assignment? And the deed of assignment should have been sent to uh, us, we always talk about it, plural, us, uh, via recorded delivery, and it never is. So, and they use the word sometimes assignment, right? But not a deed of assignment. They always try and twist it to try and confuse and they're, they're basically they're lying. But anyway, this one, I won't say the names of the companies, there's a few of them, and they're doing this now. And it's like, we are not the owners. And that's what they say. We're not the owners of uh, this debt. Uh, so the, um, the data controller is the original debtor, the bank, the credit card company, whatever it is, that's what they're trying to say. All right, obviously they're never gonna admit We've just bought your data, right? So the reply that I've just posted off, I think I must've done about three or four replies, it's similar just this week, which uh, I think is quite funny, you know, to the replies to them. So they're saying, look, we don't need to uh, uh, do a DSAR. We don't need to reply with the 
compliance to your DSO because we're going to send it to the original um, creditor, the bank or the credit card company. Now, a lot of these uh, debt collection companies, you know, they actually work on commission only, right? So they haven't actually bought the data fully. They'll have just been on, like, they'll, they'll have bought it on a, um, a commission basis. So they won't um, get any any uh, compensation unless they actually collect. And they'll get a percentage on what they collect. All right, so, you know, they're, they're kind of telling the truth when they say that. But it's good, so I've just replied there and I went, thank you for your correspondence, dated blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, thank you for your confession that you are merely a third party interloper interfering on private business between us and a private party. Thank you for the confession which states that you have no business with us, no contract with us no chores in action therefore your participation in this matter is unlawful and unwanted we demand you cease and desist all correspondence on this private matter immediately any further correspondence from your and you put like the, the you know the man for instance blah 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 who sometimes acts as the man uh, sometimes acts as the director and his name again will be seen as um, a trespass by way of harassment and will be dealt with accordingly yeah and then we sign off as the settlor and just the name in lowercase all right that's that's how we do it that's what I've just sent off, see what they come back with. Because in reality, if they're actually stating, well, we're not the, uh, we're not uh, the, the, the data controller, we're, we're simply acting on behalf of um, a third party company. Well, like the response completely is exactly what I just said. But well, who the hell are you? You know, I've got no contract with you. Don't you dare interfere in my personal business, you know? So in reality, you know what I mean? Like if some thug comes knocking on your door, saying, hey, you are the postman, or you are the milkman, or you are the, the a newspaper delivery boy, 20 quid. You say, well, I'm going to go and see him then, but it's got nothing to do with you. Piss off. You know, that's the truth of it, isn't it? So, you know, don't let them get away with that rubbish, trying to get away with not replying correctly to your DSAR. And then, you know, they say, oh, we're sending it to uh, the bank, and then the bank say, you owe us money. You know, <laughs> that's their reply, by the way, you know. So, like, no compliance with GDPR or anything. So, you know, just so you know. So if you get anything like that, you're dealing with any uh, debt collection, you know, and they send a, a DSAR reply to you that's nonsense like that, then that's how you reply, okay? All good fun. So that's another load sent off. So I'm just doing, like, a... Um, a letter or a notice I should say to HMRC uh, it's kind of a pain in the neck but so like mine it's hard to tell if they've closed it down correctly all of the accounts um, but they should have done they said they had done they said we sent it we agree you don't have to do any tax returns blah 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 when I'm sending it I'm sending it to like you know I am on uh, writing to Mr. or Mrs. and when I say Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R don't use abbreviations Mrs. M-I-S-S-E-S Mr. or Mrs. H-M-R-C or wherever you would be you know I-R-S or whatever uh, and if there's a name on it I'd also put and or the man or woman and then their name Fred Smith who sometimes acts as whatever they'd put themselves administrator I think they'd put their name on this one um, so, like you know they've actually sent a letter stating yet yeah, we agree you don't need to send any tax returns blah 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 and then they went and sent this other one so that you is a fine for not sending it yeah. that makes a lot of sense doesn't it anyway so uh, I've had oh tripping up on a sand
this is down the beach, right on the beach. Turn it round for your look, so. This is the harbour a little bit there. And there, uh, the beach stretching down there. A bit cloudy. Sun comes out now and again. It's quite busy. Quite busy today. Yeah, there's the island over there. It's cut off. And we're back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you just like state as you know, I, your man, uh, have received no income. Uh, taxable or otherwise um, but if you believe that there is a debt then we can uh, supply remedy you always supply remedy you don't go and you go into controversy all right so just remember that you never go like, like you know oh, I demand this and demand that prove there's a debt I want the proof of claim you don't do that because it causes controversy and you don't want to cause controversy Right, you're just saying I'm going to supply remedy um, if that this was uh, due, okay? And if there is any debts or anything like that, uh, then it would be for a, a bill, proper bill, not a statement. Remember, and it would have to have on the uh, the, the the bill the, the words past due or post due. You know. Just, that's how it should be done. That's a, that's a bill, a real bill. But uh, we don't get bills, do we? We get statements and we get nonsense trying to trick you into being your estate. And that's all there is. So we sign it off for and on behalf of the, if it was me, okay, if I was doing it, the Peter Wilson estate uh, by the man Peter. Lowercase. And that's it. And that's how we deal with the uh, HMRC or IRS and we'll see what happens with this one but it's still just corresponding uh, I'm sending notices and they send letters see what happens so I was going to go live last night but I went out, I went out for a walk and when I got back I felt really ill didn't feel good at all both me and Janine felt ill the um, I don't know it was just felt drained felt sick I uh, felt as if I had no energy really really weird and another thing is really funny. Well, that wasn't funny, mine feeling ill. So I couldn't, I couldn't uh, go online. So I started watching these videos, which was good. I'll tell you about them in a second. Uh, but um, everybody's got to notice now that time is just flying so fast. You think, hang on a second, why is time running so fast? Yeah, and I, I'm telling you, it is. I feel this all the time. And loads of other people keep saying to me all the time, isn't time flying so fast? Isn't time going by so fast? And it is, you know, and that's a real thing. It's not your imagination. And I think it's what they're doing. I think they're jumping timelines and I think that they are like messing around with whatever it is technology that they have, you know? So we have to combat that. Now, the only way that we can combat that is with the creator. So what we have to do is we have to ground ourselves and we have to do it regularly every day, you know, a few times a day. And when I say ground yourself, what I mean is that, you know, you've got to get into bare feet, you've got to get out the Gaia, you've got to get out Mother Earth. Get bare feet and go out on the grass or whatever it is, not concrete, because that's not real. All right, get out the grass, get your bare feet on there and, and connect with Gaia. And then connect with the source, connect with the creator above. So you've got father above and mother below, and you're connected to them both. And ground yourself and source yourself and send your connection down from the creator above through the crown chakra right the way down and then have it grounding through the Gaia with your bare feet on the grass. Tides out so the, the river's low. I'm gonna walk up here and see if I can see those ducks. Yeah, so that's the way we're gonna have to try and fight this, this whatever it is they're doing with the time because it is flying by so fast that and I think probably, you know, that if you see all the craziness that they're actually trying to create, and I think it's because they've run out of a lot of time in their essence, because everything has to happen, you know, all of their satanic rituals, all has to be on specific numerical dates. All the numerology has to fit. So, you know, when and they're running out of time, and that's why they're pushing everything at us like mad, because the dates are slipping by. Or 
something along those lines you know I know I probably sound like what a lot of people think he's nuts but it is what it is and uh, you know we have to try and combat their satanic rituals you know they did that big one a few weeks ago didn't they they called it the what was it the platinum bloody whatever jubilee or something yeah and all those fools cheering and waving at a hologram <laughs> and giving her energy such a just a pure energy harvest you know and what else did they do with that energy oh man it just makes you feel sick you know what else did they do what other sacrifices did they get up to when they harvested everyone's energy and then tried to harvest all those souls Ew, creepy uh, anyway so I, could, I didn't have any energy to do and I was trying to like drink drink uh, eat some food like when I got back I was just like oh I just like I don't know if it helped or not but I don't know I just felt really weak and just yak so I thought I'm just gonna sit then and uh, watch some videos so I've been doing a lot of uh, studying not just on the the private trusts and everything like that and the finance but also just going back in history and trying to find out more about like you know the first world war and the second world war because hopefully you'll all be of the mind that it's complete farce what they tell you nothing what they've said is true you know events uh, and we was looking a lot at the connections with the committee of 300 which I did a video, a short video anyway, not, not massively going into it. Um, and I watched this video, it was actually uh, Jamie Freeman sent it on his channel. And I thought, oh, I'll just have a look at that. I've always been looking at stuff like this. Um, so, and it, this, oh yeah, I, didn't, I haven't watched it all, it's a five hour video. But uh, there's a, another guy that I follow, I can't remember his name now. And um, he does a lot of like the history and the real history and the true history of what happened. And all of these companies that just like made millions upon millions and millions of profit um, from the war. Uh, you know, like Henry Ford and Henry Ford's company, you know, the Ford Motor Company, because he supplied all the engines to Hitler. You know, so if it was truly the enemy, then why would you be? You know, supplying all of uh, the engines um, to him to come and uh, attack your your country or your troops or whatever it is. Um, he actually, Henry Ford, he actually sued the U.S. government for bombing um, his equipment in the war over in Germany, and he sued them. But I'm going to tell you that, Ollie. And he succeeded, he got he got his money because they bombed his equipment. You know, all the tanks and everything were all his engines, you know. He was making all the uh, tanks and everything to go and blow up the, the American soldiers. And then he got compensation because he sued the US government because they bombed his equipment. It was the German army's equipment. Check it out. So it is on that video, but I had been reading about that earlier on and I was like wow and uh, the ball bearings as well which was like for the guns again made I can't remember what company now but made by a US company and then supplied to Hitler they were making fortunes but like these people right these corporations they you know and they were talking a lot about Andrew Carnegie and I've read a couple of books about him might have even been been his book you know, and they've got that one as well, Think and Grow Rich, or something, you know, but it's tied a lot to Andrew Carnegie. It says a lot about him. You know, like, oh, you've got to match, do what he did, be successful. These corporations, they're not success stories because of what he did, right? It's all fed through the committee of 300. They know what corporations they need and require to help run the government right and uh, run the world okay which is when you hear the speech by uh, John F Kennedy when he was telling everyone about 
this evil is in the world trying to run the world um, and he was trying to stop them and now we know what happened to him you know and then uh, you know obviously getting it blamed on that poor guy Lee Harvey Oswald he didn't do anything he couldn't have it's impossible right but anyway so that, that Carnegie you know I remember like you know going on to seminars and people like you know really bigging him up seeing how great he was and like so successful he ruined thousands upon thousands of people's lives just for money he is doing or he did um, exactly what I'm gonna go up these steps he did exactly what you got all these other companies that are doing now you know to the workers he just basically like the, the reduced all of the wages made them live in poverty in terrible conditions terrible working conditions um so he could increase profits you know um so like all these people on these webinars not webinars seminars used to go on these business seminars even it was like in the martial arts uh, world you know and they would have these people that they would put up there you see you now we need to emulate them you know be successful like them and then you find out about them they were successful because they were hurting other people you know <sighs> who wants to do that well i certainly don't want to do that anyway but uh these corporations like facebook like amazon you know they, they're not successful because you've got some idiot right like jeff bezos from amazon and he's showing a photograph of him sitting in his office actually packing a parcel what a load of balls bollocks right he's where he is now because of the committee of 300 they've created this corporation and they've made it so that that corporation can get rid of all the competition all right that is exactly what that is and uh fast book you know have you seen that idiot right zuckerberg right do you really think that he's got anything about him that he would be able to be that successful yeah you know, the guy's an idiot it's all the committee of 300 and all these corporations you know the ones that they create um are there purely under their their guide i think i can see the i'm gonna go down and have a look and see if i can see the little ducks there the little baby ducks show you them you know it's got nothing to do with uh, being a good businessman or anything like that or even look it's to do because that they were created not by him but by the committee of 300 um, and they had to be in the position that they're in and that's all there is to it you know and uh, they just destroy everything in their path which is exactly what uh, Andrew Carnegie did destroying different people's companies and lives and his own workers lives and then put himself up there as like you know uh, a, a, a charity hero a little bit like Bill Gates you know what I mean by does it like oh yeah well I'm just trying to help people and we're just like um, having this foundation so that we can get everybody vaccinated yeah <laughs> I'm gonna stick them all them needles in your own eyes you prat but uh Slippy bits of wood here. So that, that's uh, how these corporations get to run. Tomorrow, this is Saturday, I think, is it the 2nd of July? So, tomorrow, Sunday at 6 pm, go and have a look at Jez on Jez's channel. Um, Lawful Rebellion and Debt, I think it's called. Lawful Rebellion and Debt with Jez. Now, he has, uh, he's, he's got someone going on with him he's going to go live then and it's about like finance sounds like it's going to be really interesting sounds like it's got something to do with crypto as well <coughs> but definitely worth going on and having a look so i'm going to i'm going to go on and watch so get yourself along there six o'clock sunday 6 p.m jez's channel lawful rebellion and debt Ooh, slippy oh, i'm going to go down here i'm sure i had seen the ducks paddling away there but uh you know, the one thing that uh, he was saying is like, oh, you'll never need anything. You won't need any 
private uh, trust or anything like that again everything's going to be like solved you know hopefully but like I, I, would, I wouldn't say that you would never need a private trust i think everybody should have a private trust oh it's not the ducks it's just some uh, seagulls seen them in here last night seen two families uh one the little one with seven very small little babies and uh the one that i've been watching for a, a few months where they're quite big now oh actually there they are let's have a look which ones are these i think these are the little ones we've got like uh, ones that i've been watching for a few months and they um they're quite big now there's only three left and they're quite big now but they're still hanging about with their mammy yeah there's the little babies I have to watch the edge it's covered in grass and then the edge gives away and you fall in turn it round for you see have a look at these how many got there one two three four five six seven there's the mummy and her one, one two three four five six seven little little babies so the other one that i've seen like with the uh they had seven and just kept an eye on them and then it went down to six and five and four and she's got three they're actually quite big them compared even just a week ago you know they were tiny compared to what they are now look at them going and eating getting the dinner there they are good little mammy looking after her babies lovely aren't they <laughs> they're gonna go up there look see going up the, the little stream up there there's uh, a couple of herons that uh, knock about here as well and it's funny when the herons are here they're big obviously huge big birds and um, the crows dive bomb them I don't know why I don't know if the herons are bad or evil or something but right the um, these ducks here they squawk like mad at them pretty sure herons don't eat ducks but for some reason they don't like the herons have you ever seen a heron the big tall and they stand on one leg sometimes and here and the, the weird look there's some they've gone over on the other side don't lose your mammy she's keeping an eye on them oh look they're jumping into the river there they must have made a noise and frightened them there's the adventurous ones look over on the other side that's the ones that will disappear you got to be careful you know it'll be nice to see all seven surviving yeah but the uh the herons coming in the uh the crows dive bomb them and then when they go up in the woods as well there's a lot of woodpeckers hang around here as well you hear them i've never seen them i can only ever hear them and uh tons of pheasants get back up onto the path tons of pheasants as well yeah oh get back on here oh okay so like i say go and see watch that channel tomorrow six o'clock should be really interesting looking forward to it see what's good the crack is and that i've got involved in that uh, crypto stuff so uh, well from what i've been told you know you, you get a lot of protection and you can definitely be your own bank so you don't need to be using banks and letting them have control over you but you know i've literally just learning the guy who's teaching me he's with acapulco right now so he'll be back and then we'll get back onto it cracking on um but yeah, even if you have got like, you know, your crypto and everything like that and whatever it is that's going to happen tomorrow, tomorrow at six o'clock, we see make plenty of notes, I would say. Um, you definitely need a private trust no matter what. Everybody should have a private trust <clears throat> to try and protect all your belongings. Now, it doesn't matter even if you're in a rented house because ah, I don't own a property. Well, what if you do get one in the future? You, you just don't know what is around the corner. But listen. What about all the stuff that you do have inside your home? Now, they all say, well, I haven't really got much. Well, I tell you what, I'll come round your house and I'll empty it and I'll take it all away and I'll just leave you sitting, all right, with only the clothes on your back. 
and uh, see how that would feel okay now i've seen bailiffs going into houses and listing literally all of the stuff like dvds and books and everything man get every single thing that you can get into a private trust get your private trust sorted out sooner rather than later all right um and also if you need to do any type of business now even if it's like a a voluntary business remember you've got to do it as a man not as mr mrs don't take a title because if you've got a title then it makes you a citizen right and then you're gonna to have to pay tax a man does not pay tax okay just bear that in mind you know you want to get to be like you know you are a living man living woman all right so you know and if anybody here approaches you from the HMRC or IRS or CRA or whatever it would be and you just tell them you know I am man Peter uh, on behalf of the Peter Wilson estate want to know what you require from me or from I I should say you know uh, but uh, yeah you know that if you try to do any type of business you want to be doing it on what um, on the PMA the private members association you don't want to do it with a limited company okay and you don't want to do it um, as a partnership or anything like that it needs to be on a PMA even if you think you're doing something like you know in a group or it's voluntary or anything like that so and you need to do it before you start you need to get your founding documents created and you need to get your articles of association created and you need to set up an unincorporated association that's what it is and an unincorporated association can get a bank account all right now you might have to ring a few banks before you get one you know i mean i've got i deal with these people that have been doing um payments for a long time and have these unincorporated associations and have for a long time and they say the same you know it takes a while to find a bank that will actually uh, do this and not all banks do it so you've just got to ring around you've got to do some of your own research but create that and protect yourself so this terrible story that uh, someone told me um, asking for some assistance so what they did without having a PMA they just did it right they actually wanted to uh, do what everybody's trying to do really get some land right have a community and that community were going to go on and they were going to plant food and grow crops and be self-sufficient and protect themselves from food shortages and everything that they've got lined up for us however so that what they done was like their community says well everyone can donate whatever it is that you're donating your amount or whatever so they've raised all this money um now you see what they didn't do was have a pma what they didn't do was have the association and what they didn't do was have a bank account tied in and all of it be in a trust under the association all right with the unincorporated association and the articles of association so all this money went into a personal bank account now you're talking about nearly half a million pounds right i'm not giving obviously anybody's names or details you know but it just went into a personal account so they've set this up and everything's going fine they're going to go and try and buy this land and then the bank because banks are bastards closed the account froze it and took all the money so now they're fighting like mad to try and get this back okay which like you know hopefully they'll have all the receipts and everything like that but you know what they did to uh you know the truckers in canada they just froze all their accounts and even anybody who had funded them from gofundme closed their accounts froze their accounts you know so just remember this amount of spying that they're doing on you even this you know so if you're going to do anything like that at all if you're in right in the middle of doing it now you don't just need a private trust if you're trying to do like a pay uh, if you're trying to do some kind of community group that's going to have land you need to have it set up on a PMA, Private Members Association. So a Private Members Association is a non-jurisdictional entity, which means it, come, it doesn't come under acts and statutes whatsoever, no legislation. It is the law expressed by I. All right, that's what you need to do if you want to protect yourself. 
and you can right on the PMA the asset of a PMA is the articles of association and the founding documents and every member to member contract because that's what it is member to member contracts they are assets all right not the association itself the documentation is an asset so those assets they get put in a private trust all right so that again the articles of association okay on there the founding documents and your member to member contracts because everything is a contract and it's all um, comes under the universal declaration of human rights so we have inalienable rights to contract with anyone that we wish to contract with and to associate with anyone that we wish to associate with and as long as it's not for anything that's evil or uh, to cause harm to others then they can't do a thing about it okay so we know people that have these private members associations in places that were locked down completely uh, and they were running schools as a private educational association and nobody went anywhere near them they didn't shut for one day doing any lockdown anywhere they stayed open the whole time all right so that is what you do you get yourself set up in the pma right and then with the pma you're protected and you can that's how you try and find the bank that will do an unincorporated association bank account okay um now you've got to make sure that the documents are 100 percent spot on one wrong word the same as on a private trust one wrong word or wrong line talking about acts and statutes and that and you're finished and you're in deep trouble so make sure that you get it done correctly it has to be done correctly all right so you should contact me if you need any more information or help with it we can help but that's what you need to do if you're going to do anything like that and then with that bank account it's all in a private trust and then it gets stated through affidavit that it's in a private trust and that it's all under a private members association now I, nobody can guarantee anything in the world or what will happen but i would stand under any of the founding documents and i would stand under any private trust that we create and say i stand in court on that and i would fight that um believing 100 percent that, that it's uh bulletproof all right um so that's like you know nobody can guarantee everything but that's what i would state that's what i would say for sure that i would stand on that on mine so right one more thing before shoot off we're going to talk about like uh electricity especially right but the utilities now the electricity uh, there's a few companies that are getting really bad Eon, EDF You know, I, I know a lot of you have done certain things of, you know, of your own free will and that you're getting visits You know, we had the visit, we had like three police vans, six police <laughs> uh, dog handlers, four bailiffs Oh man, such fun But uh, this guy, right um, Was it this week? It might have been this week and uh, he had the same and the police actually turned up armed and I don't mean with the tasers I mean like a real gun yeah um, and they came with their big red smashing down machine and they were gonna smash his door in with this and this copper was really adamant and the guy stood there obviously well informed being completely correct being completely lawful and saying you're not getting in um, and they tried to pick his lock, but obviously got the uh, the bolts in on the inside. The door was barred; couldn't get in. So they have to leave. But then the police are there. He said, "I've been sent by my sergeant. I'm part of the entry team." What's an entry team? Who the hell did they think they are? So anyway, right? They try to smash into this door. But he stood his ground and he's, he stood there really well and now eventually and this is the thing what you've all got to try and bear in mind you are in the right you are standing under law all right if you've done everything correctly you've got nothing to, to worry about now eventually it must have went to you know an inspector definitely somebody higher up in the clown costume office so eventually this uh, clown came back who was gonna who had the gun 
and was going to smash the door in with his red door smasher in her. It's a real word. And he apologised. He actually apologised. He says, I'm wrong. I'm not allowed to work with them. Yeah, of course you're wrong. But isn't that good that he did apologise? You know, you don't get many like that, do you? But there's a proof in the pudding. They've got no no jurisdiction whatsoever. They should not be helping any bailiff. They should not be helping anyone. Doesn't matter if they've got a warrant of entry. Doesn't matter if they've got a warrant of control of goods. All right? All of them, unless you're a murderer, a rapist, or, you know, something along those lines, and they have, like, a, a bonded warrant where they can literally smash the door in and grab you out of your bed and drag you away because you are literally committing crimes, not offences. Remember, there's a difference. But, they, you know then that's all well and good. But if it's a civil matter, right, it doesn't matter if they've got a warrant. It's just still a request which you can refuse. All right, this is lawful. And it's actually even under their jurisdiction, their, their legal side, it's legal as well. All right, they're not allowed to force entry under any circumstances. It's a civil matter. All right, I'm not talking about if you've got a gas leak or anything like that, we're talking about safety measures. All right, so I've, I've, I've got videos up with all of the acts and statutes on there and what you should be doing and saying and he did it and repeated it and repeated it and repeated it. it took hours he said but he was right he stood on it he stood his ground as a man and they did apologize and leave all right so we can win because winning is on our side okay because we are in the right now just remember now i'm not giving anybody's names or details or anything but that's what happened so I don't know if I'm going to do it next week because I'm away down Wales for a bit next week. I've got a lot of work to do, running around trying to help people. But uh, and then 23rd of July, I'm down in Manchester. All right. So if you uh, want to go down Manchester, see that event down there. Okay. So, but I'm, I watched this video on how to like you know generate your own electricity, and they showed it with a big magnet and some wires are wrapped around it and, and they've got a little motor and they actually got the motor off eBay for a couple of quid, you know and they, they run this and it, they, I was watching them on the video doing it it was a very quick video, right and, and, and he plugged, it plugged in the lights because they had put a socket you know, I didn't see exact, exactly how to do it and it lit all, all of these lights up, you know and it creates a lot of electricity doing these things because like, you know, we know all right, that uh, all of the uh, electricity is in the ether, free. All right, it is in there. You know, you don't have to create anything that creates itself. You just have to harvest it. Um, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to video me building this machine. All right, hopefully I don't blow myself up. So if I blow myself up, don't you do it. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to do. Like I say, I don't think this week coming because I've got so much on running around, but I'm going to buy one of them big mad bat magnets. Should have called it a donut magnet. I might be wrong. If you know that, comment on and let me know. All right, and it, comment on anyway about just saying hello. Remember, like and, and uh, subscribe and share. Do all the business. But yeah, if, it, if it's a donut, let me know. But something like that. And I can't remember exactly how I did it. It was all these wires and everything, but it was all for a few pounds, you know, and you can generate this electricity. So you can imagine if you could generate it and you could have it running your fridge and your freezers and stuff like that, and they cut you off. And I believe they're going to cut you off in the, in the winter. They're going to have these uh, outages, all right? Especially when it's dark in the winter and it's miserable and it's cold. They used to do it in the 70s when I was a kid and they blamed the miners. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna build it. Now, if I can do that, anyone can do that, I'm telling you. But like I say, if I blow myself up, then best not try. Um, and I'll, not next week, I don't think, because I will be away a lot. Not, not away, but like only one day away, but like running around doing tons. All right, so. I will do that probably in a couple of weeks by that. If anybody knows like the name of the donor, like comment, do it. Or if you've ever seen like anything like that, you know, let me know as well. Because I'm gonna create it and then you know if we show that and show other people, you know, if some bloke like me can do it, you know, then anyone can do it. And then you can like protect yourself, you get these outages where you can even just have your lights on in your house or have an electric heater, right? 
or like I say, Ron, you've got your frozen food and everything, then you know if, if they shut the electric off, um, it's a bit of a bit of a bummer. You know, but that'll save all your frozen food, etc. If you could run your freezers and elect uh, off your own electricity that you create, how wicked would that be? All right, I think that'll do for now, and I'll get this uploaded. Okay, so have a good uh, Satan's day. <laughs> today that's what it is yeah that's what we're celebrating well we're not celebrating or we but they do all right take care see you all in a bit